Hey, what's up guys? My name's Cameron, I'm here in Utah. I uh, wanted to make a video here showing that uh, anyone, if I can do it, you can do it, can restore a classic Bronco. Uh, mine happens to be a 67. Uh, nothing special with that year. They made this model between 66 and 77 and I would probably restore any year I could get my hands on that was uh, not full of rust. But uh, I happened to buy this one behind me a couple years ago, uh, unrestored, bought it for about $9,500. And, uh, and I'm in it now, as is, um, about a little less than $30,000. Uh, anyone can do it. I am like a weekend mechanic, if that. Um, I do not have a background in restoring or working on vehicles. If you can follow directions, and watch YouTube videos, and order different kits and call customer service for these companies, you can do this, pretty simple. Uh, again, I have no background in this. If I can do this, you can do this. There's a lot of resources. Um, I'll show you right here a picture of how I got it when it came, and, uh, and then you can see the afterwards. All right, so when I bought this thing, it was in pretty good shape. Uh, needed some body work, obviously paint and, and a lot of stuff. And I've added a lot of stuff to it, but I've still managed to keep it uh, within a, a decent price range for what these early Broncos are going for now. Um, a couple things you have to look for if you're looking for an early Bronco, make sure it's not rusted out. Common places to have rust are down here under the rockers. Also inside the door jams here have rust, you gotta watch for those where, where the uh, uh, hinges bolt to here. And then it happens a lot inside, and I can show you that too. So common places uh, to have rust, watch for that when you're buying, and uh, try to find one as clean as you can, obviously. But there are a couple things But there are a couple things that I've done to the Bronco that I would say is absolutely essential. Um, first of all, if you're going to do these one of these things and it doesn't have power steering, absolutely worth the money. Probably about $1,000, maybe a little bit less for a power steering kit. I got mine from Borgeson. Um, I've been happy with it. Um, disc brakes on the front. And uh, I would also say probably a good suspension lift or suspension, new suspension kit. And, uh, and definitely, definitely change your bushings. It's cheap, it's not that hard, um, and it really quiets down the ride. Uh, a lot of the bushings on these things are worn. This, this one, the bushings were, I don't know how old, but the kits are, are very reasonably priced and they make a difference. So those are a couple things. I'll show you what I've done. All right, here's what it looks like under the hood now. I will uh, show you a picture of what it looked like before and kind of how, I, how I've how i just cleaned it up. Uh, this was not a frame off restoration, by the way. It was more of a facelift and an upgrade. Um, it I've been completely happy with it, but the engine was super, super dirty and old looking and just a few easy and expensive things. Uh, made it look much better. It's actually kind of dirty. I have not washed this Bronco in months. It's the middle of winter in Utah, so I uh, haven't washed it. But a couple things I added. Uh, first of all, first, when I drove this thing home, uh, power steering disc brakes were not on the list of things that I wanted, wanted to get done first. But after driving it for about 10 minutes um, on my way home, I realized that disc brakes power steering were the first two things that I would do. So basically, here's my uh, Borgeson power steering kit right here. Um, the, the, the hardest part of this, it wasn't very tough. I had to unbolt the old gearbox here, and then I had to put the pump right here and, engine, uh, and, and mount it onto the block. But the, probably the most difficult thing was taking this um, steering shaft, cutting it down, and adding this fitting right here. Um, you can see right here how it's flat. I had to grind, I had to cut it off, I had to measure it, cut it off, 
and then grind that down flat so it fit into that fitting and then drill little divots for these uh, bolts to hold it on. Wasn't hard, it really just need a grinder um, and, uh, and a cutting wheel, which, which is fairly inexpensive, and you can do this. Um, it did take a little bit of time, it took me probably a day to hook up this power steering kit. Um, but following directions and probably, I probably called Borgeson or maybe Tom's Bronco Parts a couple times and talked to somebody there. They're always helpful. Absolutely worth the money I to did. do that. Disc brake on the front. Now, just so you know, I did not go with an expensive disc brake kit like Willwood. I just went from with, with one that, uh, uh, kind of a generic disc brake kit that uh, I got. I may have gotten it on eBay, I can't remember. I may have ordered it from a, a parts place. But I want to say it was maybe five, six hundred dollars for the front discs. Made a world of difference. Um, if your brakes are working, I think it's totally fine to leave the drum brakes on the rear. But disc brakes on the front is essential. It made all the difference in the world in stopping. Um, I ended up adding disc brakes to the rear back there. I don't know if you can see or not, but uh, I ended up adding those um, later on but didn't necessarily need to. I just wanted that security of having disc brakes on the front end. What I did was I ordered a two and a half inch lift kit. I didn't want to do a body lift. I wanted to do a suspension lift. I thought that was the right way to do it. And I ordered one from Tom's Bronco Parts. It was great. Came with the springs in the front, an extra leaf spring in the rear for the lift, and the shocks. Uh, I kept that for a while. Um, worked great for me off-roading and everything, and then I decided to upgrade. I had talked to a bunch of people at different places. I thought about getting the Fox 2.0 shocks, um, but I ended up, they said that the uh, Bilsteins were actually probably the better shocks for the Bronco for a softer ride. Uh, they were less expensive than the uh, Foxes, so I ended up going with Bilstein, and I've been very, very happy with it. Has a, a nice ride, handles all of the stuff uh, in the mountains where I go and uh, very nice and smooth on the road. So I would definitely, definitely think about maybe upgrading the shocks, um, but along with the shocks, while you're in there, while you're doing that, you guys, do your bushings. It is inexpensive. Sure, it might take you a day or so, but it is a, a nice thing that creates a nice, muffled sound. You don't get all the rattling of everything on the car. Those old bushings, mine were just shrunken and small and uh, and and I put new bushings on and sometimes they're hard to get on. You have to grease them up and sometimes pound them on, but uh, it sure makes a difference. So change your bushings. I'll show you those well, bushings. Do the C bushings right in there. Uh, there's YouTube tutorials on how to do it. Um, it, it did take a few minutes to get in there. But, uh, but it does make a difference. Change your bushings on your shocks up here and down low, and especially on the rear, on the leaf springs. Change these bushings here on your front and your rear leaf springs back there. And I would even uh, recommend changing your body mounts. Uh, sometimes your Bronco doors are off and a lot of times it's just the body mounts, but change those bushings. It's inexpensive and simple. And, uh, I do have to say here, there's a lot of good resources when you don't know what you're doing. YouTube, I find a ton of videos on YouTube. Uh, Nashville Bronco, John Melton out there in, in Nashville. Uh, love his videos, he does a great job. You could probably watch his videos and rebuild a Bronco from scratch. And uh, he's, uh, he does a great way of, of, he has a great way of explaining it, filming it. And, uh, and doing it. He calls himself a weekend mechanic. I'm probably half that. And uh, following his videos, I, I was able to do a lot of stuff. So um, call uh, Tom's Bronco Parts. Sometimes I work with a guy there. Uh, I talk to him, his name's Angel. Always willing to help. Super nice, super helpful. All of those Bronco places, Bronco Graveyard. And, uh, and geez, I'm trying to think, LMC Truck. Uh, I got a lot of parts from LMC Truck. And uh, there's a few places to go, but let me show you a couple, a couple a year of years after I bought this thing, I had decided to add uh, fuel injection. And there are several different fuel injection kits. There's the Fitec, there's the Holly Sniper. Now Edelbrock has one. I've heard the Edelbrock one's great. I think you pay a little bit more for it, uh, but I've heard it's worth it. I ended up going with Holly. Uh, I've been pretty happy with it. I, have, I did have a few little things. A sensor was bad when I ordered it. It took weeks for me to figure out what it was. 
and I finally just took the sensor off, the throttle positioning sensor, I think it was, and, uh, and, ha and called them and said, send me a new one, and they did, and it fixed my problem. But um, lately I've been having some backfiring with, uh, with the Bronco, and I thought it was maybe related to either exhaust or an exhaust leak or the fuel injection kit. I ended up taking it in, and I put new exhaust on the whole Bronco. It was like six or 700 bucks. Not really something I wanted to spend my on because I had already replaced all of the exhaust on it. Um, it did not fix the backfiring, so I reset the Holly Sniper to its factory settings, and then I couldn't even get it idle. I tried everything, spark plug, spark plug wires, uh, and ended up taking it into a shop, and this is what they had added. So they went through and did the timing, and then they added a new, first of all, a new distributor, upgraded my distributor from the old one, and added the Holly Sniper um, ignition system. I don't know a lot about that because I did not do it on my own, but uh, it got it to run a lot smoother. Along with this, it ended up costing me probably $1,700 to have them work on it and add this, but uh, supposedly it's a lot better. <laughs> but it's still backfiring. I'm trying to figure out what it is. I want to say it has something to do with the Holly uh, system, but I don't know 100%. Other than that, I've been pretty happy with the Holly Sniper, and the, the biggest reason why I like having fuel injection is because the vehicle starts right There's up. There's nothing like walking out of a store uh, or a gas station or whatever, and you're walking up to your Bronco and you open the door and someone's like, dude, your Bronco's so awesome, it looks perfect, and you're like, thanks, man. And then you go to start it, and it's like, <laughs> forever, and then it finally fires up, and I just hated that. So. That probably was the number one reason, which may sound stupid, I added fuel injection system. But the nice thing is, now I can just turn the key. I've got the sniper. You can hear the, uh, you can hear the pump going. You let it prime for a second, and it fires right up. Before I would get that, it took a while to start. Fuel injection took care of that. And also, when I'm in Moab, or somewhere doing this kind of stuff, uh, which I do, I beat the crap out of this Bronco, it does not cut out on me and it doesn't die, um, which was another big reason I wanted it because uh, yeah, it's scary when you're on a big hill and your Bronco dies and you're wondering what's going on and your power brakes cut out and, and your power steering. So I did it for those reasons and it's been great. Bronco's run really well, had some backfiring, still trying to figure it out, but it's drivable and uh, all right, yeah. some of the interior stuff I did, uh, I, I really liked the look of the, the original front seats. So I ordered new covers for these seats. One regret is I did not order the padding. I think it was like $75 a seat. I wish I would have, I didn't. I put these on myself. It was a huge pain. I did it in the winter, I used a heat gun. I think it's a lot easier in the summer if you can lay your, your new seat covers out in the sun, let them heat up and then stretch them over. Um, but going back, I probably would put new padding in here. Um, it would be a little bit more, you can see it's not perfect. It would be a little bit more bolstered and, and better looking if I had new padding and probably more comfortable. Uh, another thing I did I really liked is this thing right here. Now I have three kids, my little girl is four years old and I have two little boys and my boys can sit back here. I threw, I, I don't like the rear seats in the original Broncos. I know some people love them, they wanna keep it original. I didn't, I wanted to be comfortable. This seat, well worth it. I think I paid less than $300 for it. It's a best top. It folds forward and then and then flips up forward too, so it gives you more space in the back. It's comfortable. I've actually got three seat belts there. You can't tell, but there's one seat belt uh, on each side and then one in the middle if I wanna strap three little kids in there. But this is something I like. I actually found this on eBay. I was trying to decide if I wanted to put a console in here. I decided I wanted to try to figure out how I could make it a seat. So I got on eBay and started looking for like mid console seats. And I think this came out of like a 70s Jeep Comanche or something like that. It was old and worn when I bought it, but it was functional. And I had measured this area and, and got the measurements on this and it works. So I threw a seat belt in it. I had this thing reupholstered, probably cost me 150 bucks to have it reupholstered. I think it looks decent. It matches my leather in here. And, uh, and I can put my little girl, she can sit right here while we're, we're off-roading and stuff. I have a seatbelt for her. And then when she's not, I have an armrest. 
Um, I really like this. It was probably one of my favorite things I did to the interior. It's functional, it's comfortable, I think it looks good, and uh, gives you an extra seat in your Bronco. But uh, yeah, the seat covers, easily worth it. Maybe $150 for the covers, maybe $300 for that seat, and I probably paid about $100, $100 for that, and then another $100, $150 to get it repolstered. And I really liked it. I bought this, it had a three on the tree transmission up here. And I, I hated it. I thought it was silly and goofy. And so I, I ordered this Hurst shifter, three gear shifter kit from, uh, from Hurst. One of the best things I did. I love it. It looks nice. Um, I got this cover for it. Uh, I, I had read reviews that said the hardest thing to do is cutting the hole right there to put it in for, for installation. Absolutely true. It is not difficult to install. Um, you would think it is, but it's not. The hardest thing was probably cutting that hole and then and then getting the cover over it. I ended up ordering another Hurst um, shifter for for this and just welded it on down down in there uh, for my four wheel drive. I really like that. The steering wheel I got, uh, I really like. I think it makes it look a little updated in here. Um, I think I paid about. $300 for that steering wheel, but I really like it. I've never gotten the horn to work. So I actually installed the horn right down here on a button. If you can see that. Yeah, that's my horn. The stereo, I don't know if I'd recommend putting a big stereo in. I do like the big face on it, um, but I'd like to someday add AC and I'm not sure if that will get in the way. Another thing I did, heated seats. Uh, best thing ever. The heated seat kits are super cheap. They're like $30, $40 for both. And so if you're reupholstering your seats, you literally just, it's sticky on one side and you literally just stick one here, stick one there, run the wires down. The wires are somewhere back in here and then you connect it. When I had my stair hooked up, I asked them if they could go ahead and hook those up too. They did. Uh, I don't even think they charged me because it was so easy for them. Heated seats, it's very, very easy. I drilled these holes and put these in and it has been great when it's cold. And I, uh, you know, me or my wife are driving and, the heat on these things is a little wonky, so I can turn on the heated seats and it keeps us warm and it works really All right, well. here's another thing I did. The roof on these tops, I usually have the top off in the summer, but the roof, I uh, I wanted to make it nice in here. I actually put down Dynamat all through the Bronco and I stuck it on the roof too to try to keep the sound down. Um, and then I just, I ended up getting uh, just speaker box cover material. And it's cheap, easy, it looks decent. I had to take the top off. I put a bunch of padding down in my garage and some cardboard boxes and a blanket and flip the, the top upside down. I used uh, spray adhesive to get this stuff to stick. Make sure you get a good spray adhesive because in the summer it will fall and all of your material will be hanging down. Uh, it happened to me when I first did it and then I had to go get a better adhesive spray. Um, but uh, I think it looks decent and it was a, an inexpensive way to do it for the interior. Uh, just cut them to size, spray and stick. And, uh, and that's the interior ceiling for my hardtop that uh, I would also recommend. And like I said, I put a uh, dyno mat down under my carpet kit to keep the sound down. Uh, I, th I think it works pretty well, um, but you know, it had an old spray in liner all through the interior and didn't really do anything. So I threw Dynomat down and then I ordered a carpet kit uh, for maybe three or $400. Uh, I would definitely order this kit right here. I think it's 150 or so to hold the carpet in. Uh, it has a bunch of pieces of that for all the different places, but carpet kits, I think are well worth it. I, uh, I It makes it comfortable and soft in here and uh, kind of updated.